Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Josh Rudd, a college baseball scout and a college baseball YouTuber. How are you doing today? I am good, Brand. Thanks for having me, man. I don't, I'm not usually the one answering the questions. I'm usually asking them, so hopefully I'll do all right for you. Can you talk about how you got started in being a college baseball scout? Well, I was a coach for a long time, um, pretty much every level at the youth level, travel, high school, uh, some collegiate summer ball stuff I used to coach. Um, I was working in professional clubhouses, so I had been around the game for a long time, but mostly as a, a coach. Uh, and then when I had two little kids, I kind of couldn't, couldn't put in all the hours that I had been as a coach. And so evaluating talent and developing relationships and helping kids find places that they should go and talking with college coaches and trying to match them up with potential student athletes. It, it kind of just, it, it fell into my lap and started working out that way. So I was able to still be in the game, be around the kids, talking to the coaches um, and be very involved. But I was also able to be home at a reasonable hour or working from home so that I can help my wife uh, with the kids. What are some of your accomplishments that you've achieved so far as a college baseball scout? Um, you know, I, I, I think if there's something that I'm proud of, it's um, that, you know, I, I think I make a, a positive difference to a lot of families. It's not about baseball. Um, I, it's never what it's been about for me. Uh, in my role, I always talk to families about how it's it's helping your kid and your family make a good decision for your child's future, whether that includes baseball or not. Um, sometimes it's a bad idea to keep playing baseball at the college level. You know, sometimes kids are digging themselves into uh, debt, really big debt, or going to a place where they're just they're not going to end up being comfortable or successful because it's too far from home or the dynamics of the culture just won't work. Um, so if there's anything I'm most proud of, it's that, you know, I'm just kind of going off the feedback I've gotten from parents is that I'm honest and I help these kids as young men, not as baseball players. I, I approach it from, I approach it from a, a standpoint of this is not about baseball. Baseball is a part of it, but this is about being a young man and being a successful man one day. What's the day-to-day -day life as a baseball scout? Um, well, right now, because of COVID, it's a lot of sitting in front of the computers. Um, in my role as an independent scout, I'm editing videos for players. I'm helping players identify schools that they will, um, that they should maybe target. So schools that match up with their athletic ability and their academic ability, schools that match up with what they're looking for culturally, um, so helping the kids figure out what they want is a big part of what I'm doing. Um, we don't want kids to, to be recruited by the school. I, I kind of look at it from another way where we want the kid to recruit the schools, the ones that they want to go to that fit their needs. So we have to work a lot on figuring out what those schools are. Um, because many kids end up committing to schools, colleges that they had never heard of in their life before the recruitment process. So, and that's a good thing. You know, they don't know, kids don't know what's out there. They only know what they see. You know, they know Vanderbilt and Clemson and Georgia and Florida and Miami and these great programs that are on TV in front of them. But they don't realize how many great opportunities are out there. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, one of the biggest things I'm doing is trying to work with these kids to help them identify what are some things that are important to them and how do we find what type of options might be out there. Um, I'm editing a lot of videos, as I mentioned before. I have a lot of phone calls with uh, coaches and emails, um, social media promotions, uh, a lot of extensions sheets and updating things um, it, it's a it, it's a lot of different hats it depends on, on what day sometimes I'm acting like a travel agent for families uh, so yeah it's each day is is different um, but everything and anything that goes into the recruiting process uh, I may be doing some of that one day 
Can you talk about your YouTube channel and how you got started with it? Well, the YouTube channel really was just a way to put player videos um, online and make them public and free to access. Uh, right now, you know, looking at kids' videos where they are, um, they're, they're on for pay websites, you know, uh, and understandably so. But you have to have a subscription to the showcase websites if you want to watch a kid's video, right? Uh, the kid doesn't necessarily own the right to their video. So the YouTube channel just really started out as a place to archive their videos over time and give them easy access to it if they want to send it to coaches. Um, recently, it's taken a different turn since COVID and during the quarantine. Um, and then I just started doing a lot of interviews with guys that I knew, coaches I knew. And so that now has picked up a lot of subscribers who started following along with the quarantined coaches program and the college tour. And now these round tables we're doing. And, and Rob Freeman, uh, Pitching Ninja, has been a huge help to me uh, in getting that going. And, you know, we have pro guys on. In fact, earlier today, we just finished Dan Straley. We've had um, ba Trevor Bauer and Mike Clevenger and, we did something with Leo Mazzoni. So the YouTube channel, <clears throat> honestly, like nothing was planned for it. Um, and, and just kind of, hey, let's talk to this guy. Or hey, let's talk to that guy. Or let's grab some video of this stadium and just put it on there. Can you talk about how you got started with the quarantine coaches? Because that's how mm -hmm. I followed. When I started following you, you were doing mm -hmm. that. I think that's when most people started following me, actually. Uh, was quarantined coaches and that was something totally organic um i don't i don't remember how i don't remember how or why i i started doing that it was once they shut the season down i called my buddy uh mike metcalf who's the recruiting coordinator at florida state where i graduated and i said hey will you come on here and, and let's do an interview uh let's do something about you know the shutdown and what what do kids need to you know, be doing. Uh, and he was like, yeah, of course. So we did one. And then I had a coach send me a DM and be like, Hey, I'd love to do one of those with you too. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's do that. And just really quickly, the dominoes started to fall where everybody wanted on board because it was, it was, it was beneficial to everybody. It really was programs were able to stay out front. Um, college programs. They were able to stay out front. They were able to put their brand out there. Um, high school kids were getting to learn. Uh, I, I don't know, man. It was just, it was kind of like we didn't mean to, but we started a little spark in just a forest fire from there. I think I did like 60 of those things in a matter of four weeks or something. It was, it was crazy. Um, but everybody wanted in. And once we started getting people in that wanted in, a lot of it was people I knew, which was the East Coast and stuff like that. But then I'm like, okay, well, we need to expand and, and go to the West Coast to try to get some different regions in. So then I started to reach out to some other places as well. And like, like Tony Vitello, I saw you had him on one of your shows, Tennessee. Um, it, it was just really cool. I mean, it was really cool at a really bad time uh, that kept kind of college baseball out front. Um, and I'm just... I'm happy that I was able to to be a little bit of a part of that. Yes, I can thank you for getting Tony because I saw your interview with him and I was like, hmm, that interview looks good. So I reached out to him, man. Yeah, he's a good, he's he's a great one, man. He's really straightforward and um, yeah, he's a good interview. Can you talk about your your channel when you do the college baseball like um, vids, visits? Sure. So we did uh, myself and Jake Robbins, who is um, the owner, operator, head trainer at Showcase Baseball Academy in Matthews, North Carolina. Um, him and I have developed a friendship and then we decided, let's go, let's go to a campus or two over the winter, the fall, and let's see them and let's film them. And the idea was really just to kind of go say hello to a coach talk for a few minutes, film the clubhouse in the field and put it up on a short five minute video, um, you know, on social media. That, that really was the goal. 
And the very first one we did, we went to uh, Durham, North Carolina, and met with Coach Pollard, the head coach at Duke. And Coach Pollard... was amazing um he you know like here what's the arena the durham bulls arena i'm gonna just drive me crazy duke's arena what's it oh man now i'm gonna feel well no the the basketball <laughs> um <laughs> And he sat down with me for like 20 minutes. And then he showed us around the school, uh, like took us on this personal tour. And then we went over to Durham Bull Stadium and took us on a tour. And we sat down in the dugout and talked even more. It, it kind of turned out to just be something way more than what we had planned. And I remember Jake Robbins and I leaving being like, wow, well, that." just sets the standard now for what the rest of this college tour is going to be. Um, and be in a TV series, but that's what ended up happening. Can you talk about your future plans for your YouTube channel? Um, there are no plans for my YouTube channel. I uh, It's kind of how it got to this point is no plans, just I'm a believer in, in just do good stuff each day, right? Wake up, work hard, produce produce something good, whether that's on YouTube or, or in the kitchen, you know, just do good things each day and it'll work out. So I'm not really sure with the YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to continue to see where all this takes us and um, any chance there is to put out content that's going to be helpful to the high school aged kids, the kids that are going, the families going through the recruiting process, um, or just entertain the casual baseball fan. Whenever there's an opportunity to grab some content, I'll, I'll just continue to do that and, and throw it out there. But there's, there's no game. What are you trying to do or what's the plan? And, Honestly, there's no master plan. It's just having fun, recording what I'm doing, talking to cool baseball guys instead of on the phone, making them get on the camera with me and record it so other people can get an inside look at, at, what, at what college baseball looks like. What advice would you give upcoming YouTubers looking to get into the profession of being a baseball scout or stuff like how we're doing? Well, I don't think that YouTube matters so much to scouting. Um, I, I think social media, having a presence everywhere on social media does matter. I'm on, I'm on Facebook because that's where the parents are, right? And some coaches. I'm on Instagram because that's where the players are, right? Um, obviously, Twitter. Um, I'm on LinkedIn also because that's, again, more parents. I mean, you really have to tap into every – and there's more social media outlets that I'm not taking advantage of that I should. I think anybody who wants to have a presence or an influence in anything needs to understand the power of social media and the reach of social media. And YouTube is just one of those outlets. Um, but, you know, if you want to be successful in scouting – I think really, if you want to be successful in anything in life, it's all about developing relationships. Be loyal, be truthful. Uh, I get my, if I get in trouble, it's because people don't like the truth or because I say the truth too bluntly. I will not lie, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, scouting though, truth is big because you can't lie to coaches because then they won't believe you as a scout and they'll never come back to you to help them find players. So the truth, the honesty with the parents, um, the working hard, you know, um, just grinding. It's a lot of relationship building, like with anything in life. That's great advice. Just relationship building, meet people. Don't just, yeah, don't, don't just I'll get a phone number and, and ask it for uh, that was something I did that's been 
really big. Like people don't just want to email, they want a personal relationship. So get on the phone for five, 10 minutes and introduce yourself to people. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media and your channel? Um, so on Twitter and on Instagram, it's at J Rudd underscore scout. So at J R U D D E. Underscore Scout J Zero. I'm out there. Just follow you, and, and they'll run into me, right? Yes. You. Thank you again for your interview. And you can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck in your future. All right, Brandon. Great job, man. Keep up the good work. Talk to you soon.